So I have finally gotten myself some watercolor tube paints and in today's video I'm going to show you how I set up my watercolor palette. Hello my friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. Over the years we have done a ton of watercolor painting together and today's video is a watercolor tutorial but we're not painting. We're gonna set up a watercolor palette using uh, two paints. If you are progressing your watercolor practice having an understanding of setting up a palette, a proper palette, choosing your colors, and having an understanding of color and the color wheel, that's really gonna push you forward. Now, with that said, anyone who's been around here for a minute knows that on this channel, I am all about taking the fear out of the artistic process. I believe this is a personal feeling that there is just too, way too much chatter online about people trying to prove what they know and get really technical when it comes to art and that is totally fine. You can nerd out on color and you can go really deep with it. And on this channel, in the hopes of encouraging people towards an art practice that is just for fun, just to relax, I tend to steer clear of a lot of technical stuff. It um, can really be alienating when you're getting started, feeling like in order to sit down with a set of watercolors, you need to know like names like burnt sienna and raw umber. You don't, all you need to know is that you've got paints, you've got paper, you're gonna have some fun. Where do you begin? When it comes to watercolor paints, there are three main types. The one you see me use on the channel all the time is uh, what you would call cakes or pans. They often come in a, why can't I open that? <laughs> they often come in a, a set where you're getting a whole bunch of colors in one place and that's nice. They are dried watercolor paints and often they'll have a palette included and it's a really great way to just get started with watercolors and that's what you see me use most often. There's also liquid watercolors. They come um, in what looks like an eyedropper. I rarely, rarely use those. And then there are um, tube paints and they're kind of the consistency of toothpaste. If you wanted to get into really high quality watercolors, you would probably use tube paints. However, the ones that you're gonna see me use today to set up my palette are, I would say they're still student quality. They are Sennelier and um, I'm really excited to try them. And it costs me about, mm, I think just over a hundred bucks to buy these. And I think the Sennelier is gonna be like fine quality. And um, I think they're gonna meet the needs that I have, but we, we will see. So here's what I'm working with. My uh, Sennelier Series 1 paints, student quality, as I said. I've also picked up an inexpensive palette. It has uh, two sides, which I really like. Basically just means that I have a lid and my paints won't get dusty. So the left-hand side, I'll actually just use as a lid and mixing palette. That's gonna give me 16 pans over here on the right to actually fill with paint. And um, yeah, and then I've just got really lots of space for mixing and my paints won't be sitting out and getting dusty. They'll be protected when I do put them away. Now, I feel like at this point, I need to give you a disclaimer. By the time I finished this video, I was not happy with the paints. This palette turned out great, but these Sennelier paints were totally not worth the money. So of course, I didn't um, know until I tried them out after they had dried. I bought a whole set because I was gonna make a video. Normally, I would probably just buy one or two and test them. I'm all about using cheap supplies. like. I say, get yourself a $10 set and get painting. What I never say is get yourself a $100 set that's not great and get painting. Uh, you know, cheap supplies should be cheap. These are cheap, but they were a little bit expensive. So I'm very disappointed. I won't even be linking them. On the channel, I rarely give a bad review. I try to just use products that I like, but these were complete crap, okay? So I'm just letting you know that up front. All of my chatter about understanding color, choosing your paint colors, and setting up a palette is still good info, so let's get back to it. 
Just gonna pop in for a second to remind you that I give an extra video every month on Patreon. Patreon is a great way for you to support the channel. If you love our free content, head over there and consider donating. All the bonus content, we give weekly stuff, starts at two bucks a month, and at the start of every month, there's an extra video. And for March, we are doing more gouache. I don't know, gouache has been like in the air lately or something. We've been chatting about it a lot on Patreon, getting lots of questions. So I did these really graphic, fun spring florals, and I can't wait for you to see this video. If you're a patron, I think you're gonna love it. And if you haven't tried gouache before, it's a great medium and a great kind of stepping stone from watercolor if you're looking for something new. So support the channel, head over to Patreon, and get tons more videos. When you set up your palette of paints and when you are painting, it is so helpful to have an understanding of how the color wheel works. Now, I'm not gonna get really into that today. This video, in this video, I'm assuming that you know the color wheel and you know your primaries and your secondary colors. You don't need to know your tertiary colors, but maybe you do on you and I'm just gonna assume that. If you don't know that, no problem. I have a video all about understanding color and the basic color wheel and I will link it in the video description. So even go give that a watch, then come right back here and this video is gonna mean so much more to you. So assuming that you understand the color wheel, I learned last year when I put out my video on color that it can be quite a contentious issue. <laughs> As I was saying, you can really nerd out on color, the science of it and how um, it works. And then from there, if you're an artist, you can get into pigments and how these paints are made and which pigments are in each paint because some of them have the exact same pigment, but just a, a different uh, ratio. So you can nerd out. This is not the place to do it though. <laughs> the shade of Campbell is like, it's red. <laughs> so I tend to be very like, it's light pink. And I don't always use the proper paint names. Assuming you have an understanding of the color wheel, let's give a really quick thing here just to maybe avoid confusion and um, arguing <laughs> in the comments. So you've got your basic color wheel. Now the basic color wheel, this is probably what you learned if you took an art class in um, public school. Your basic color wheel is gonna be that one that has the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. Those three primaries are the colors you mix to make all the other colors. But if you're coming from a science background, your color wheel, when you think of it in your head, might be red, blue, and green primaries. That's not what we wanna use for art. That's more to do with light. That is not to do with mixing paints and pigments. So let's just clear that up. And finally, if you are an artist and you're mixing paints constantly, then your favorite color wheel might be magenta, yellow, and cyan. And uh, that is just as valid when it comes to mixing. And today what I'm going to be doing, just for my own benefit, not to, um, <laughs> not to try and include all the color wheels, but because I think it'll allow me to mix better colors as I paint in the future, I'm kind of going to be combining the uh, yellow cyan magenta color wheel with that red, yellow, blue color wheel. And what's what I'm gonna call that is split primaries. So instead of three primaries, I'll use six. So instead of red, yellow, blue, I will use a cool red and a warm red. So a magenta and a red a cool blue and a warm blue. So almost a violet-y blue with a cerulean blue I think I'm going to use. And then a cool yellow with a warm yellow. You get it. In that way, we're sort of combining those two artistic color wheels. And the reason we're doing that isn't to, you know, look cool. It's to have the mixing potential. It's so that when you're mixing your colors, you can get um, really vibrant, true colors. You can make what you see in your mind's eye. Okay? So when creating my personalized palette, my color selection started with those six split primaries. I've got 16 pans, so that is six pigments or paint colors down, 10 to go. So the primaries are there, split primaries. From there, I wanted to choose some, I guess just what I would call darks. Um, I love Payne's Gray, so I purchased a 
tube of Payne's gray. I also grabbed um, a Prussian blue, like it's just this super dark rich navy that I love to mix with. I grabbed um, a transparent brown, so just like a really nice, cool, dark brown. And finally, a black. I'm using lamp black here. That puts me up to 10. And then I have six like fun colors, shade of colors, optional colors, whatever you want to call them. They're totally superficial. And no one will be surprised to find that I chose mostly greens for those extra colors, starting with an olive green, which kind of has a brownie tinge to it that I really love. Uh, deep thallow green. This is a very dark, cool, permanent green, and I love mixing those two together. So these are like my known favorites, as well as sap green and hooker's green, some watercolor classics. We're up to 14 there. Then I also grabbed a light pink. I think this is called Opera Rose. And Burnt Umber adds another natural brown to my palette. What I can say about this is I love mixing my own colors, but I also love having my favorites on hand as well. I could mix up a green using um, yellow and blue. I don't want to. I want to have four interesting greens just available to me there. I love to mix with like an olive green, which I could mix by making my own green and then maybe putting a little extra brown or red in it to um, to make it into that olivey browny color. But I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I just want to dip my brush in and get olive green. So that's the basic reasoning behind all of my color choices, and hopefully you'll find that helpful when you're choosing your own personalized palette. Now for the last color, my 17th, it is white. So let's talk about that, shall we? Uh, let's talk a little bit about white, shall we? <laughs> so, I always get so many questions and comments like, I've heard that you're not allowed to use white. <laughs> weird <laughs> or you should never use white and that is definitely um like a school of thought <laughs> that's maybe making it bigger than it is but that's definitely an idea or a belief that is out there so the idea behind not using white or never using white when you paint is that you can mix your colors, you can make them lighter by simply adding water. And adding water only will not change the hue of that color. It will only lighten it and it will make the color more transparent. So if you've got a really nice rich cadmium blue, you add some water and it gets a little more transparent and it gets a little lighter, you add some more water, well now we're down to this very, very light uh, baby blue. Great, fine, you don't use white. But <laughs> what if you wanna use white? I love using white because what white will do for me is actually lighten the color slightly and it will also change it a little bit. So it will change the hue of that color. It might give me a more pastel -y tone and I really like that. So I love what white does for my paintings. And I, again, I don't like a lot of rules. I think if you like the end effect, then why wouldn't you use it? It's your art practice. It's you're going to apply these paints and these pigments in the way that makes you happy to get the result that you want. Remember, this isn't a fine art channel, so there is a distinction between art and fine art. We're not doing fine art. We're doing hobby art, craft art, art for fun. And when you're doing art for fun, there really shouldn't be, um, I don't think, such a focus on these crazy rules. Yeah, I do find it so cringy. Like, I heard you never use white. Like, why? <laughs> if you like the effect that white gives you, then you, you should probably use it. <laughs> So in this video, we have gone over a lot of info, all of it relevant when it comes to choosing your palette and setting up your palette. Now let's actually do the setup. And that's for me is gonna begin by arranging my colors, starting from reds here, going through yellows, greens into the cooler greens, blues, and then my darks. And I'll probably throw one of those browns back on the end with the red. Um, yeah, that's looking like a pretty good structure or order for my colors. From here, what I need 
need to do is figure out how I would like them to sit in my palette. Remember, this is all about you and how you want your palette to work for you, so don't worry about rules. I happen to have these larger pans on the left here, and I know that I want to use them for my greens because those are the colors that I use the most often, so I want to use the large wells. So knowing that, it gives me a good starting place and I'll probably just arrange everything else from there. Let's see, we've got our greens here. We're gonna then kind of toss that out of the way, move the blues. We'll actually have the darks right in the middle of the palette, which admittedly is maybe a little weird, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> to remember, just do what works for you. I'll stick those browns together, and then that actually leads us nicely from the light brown into the reds, pinks, and yellows. So there is my palette order and setup. She looks good. Now all I need to do is fill all these little wells and we'll talk about how to do that. Of course I have my white. I'll actually put that on the other side of the lid. Um, but yeah, that's all you really need to know. What I'm doing now is filling the wells. So I am just squeezing from the end of the tube, just like you would with the toothpaste if you don't want to <laughs> upset the person you live with. Squeezing from the end and try to get in all the nooks and crannies of the well. So get in right to the corners. There's not really much else to say here other than um, I could tell as soon as I started putting these paints into my palette that they were very liquidy. Um, a lot of tube paints will have a consistency that is, mm, it's a little bit firmer than toothpaste. In fact, you may even find by the time you squeeze out a dozen or 16 tubes of paint that your hand is getting sore. My hand was definitely not sore. These were very liquid liquidy, so not a good sign for me. Again, just a full disclaimer, I am a girl who loves her some cheap supplies. I don't think art should be expensive. I want it to be accessible, but I do not like expensive supplies that uh, are cheap in quality. That's the worst and that's what happened to me here. So anyways, final step, you can use a knife or just more paint to fill these wells in to the corners so that you don't have chipping or separating later on. It's gonna make for a better pan of paint. And yeah, other than this paint being complete garbage, I'm really happy with what I've created because it's a personalized palette and I would encourage you to do the same. Follow your own rules, make the palette that's gonna work best for your art practice. If you're a hobbyist, you don't need to worry about what anyone is telling you. How else can I say, just don't worry about what you hear, even if you hear it from me and you're like, I don't wanna do that. I support you. I really support you in that decision because you're gonna watch another video after this maybe and they're gonna say, start with red and go around period. You know, but for me, these are bigger pans and I use a lot of green. So I am putting the greens on the very left and I'm good with it. Yeah, it, it really is about the effect that you want to achieve, the way you paint. As I said, if you're getting started, I would give it a few months, pick up a set like this, maybe a little nicer and, and see how you like watercolor and get used to it. Once you've practiced a bit, you'll know what colors you want to use for those extra colors and it may or may not be greens. Now that our palette is actually all set up, all we need to do is walk away and leave the paints out in the open air. I want these to dry and then what we'll do is we'll come back tomorrow, meet you back here, and we'll create a color chart and we can kind of just see how the paints are performing once they've had 24 hours to dry. Oh, I know I'm going to get questions actually. I know there's gonna be people saying, you're not allowed to use tube paints right out of the tube or you have to let them dry or you should never let them dry. Again, totally personal preference. Okay, so after 24 hours, I came back to my desk to make the color chart. This is when I really knew these paints were not great. I already had an inkling, but yeah, uh, I highly do not recommend. <laughs> um, I mean, I spent money on these. I got to make a YouTube video and then I got to tell a bunch of people these paints are garbage. <laughs> um, but if I would have bought them as a hobbyist, I would have been very disappointed. They should not have cost me over a hundred dollars. These are like craft quality. You could get something similar on Amazon for 20 bucks. 
The deep thalo green was not very dark. The Prussian blue was not very dark. The hooker's green was a weird emerald color. So basically the pigments were just diluted way too much with a lot of filler. And I have learned a few things and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. I do still believe in using cheap supplies. As I have said, that's a big part of this channel. I want art to be accessible and telling you to go spend $300 in order to have fun painting, that's not very accessible. But I don't want you spending money on products that are not worth it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for seeing me through my trial and error. I hope that you enjoyed the video. It was definitely different for me. I'll see you soon with a new tutorial. Have a good weekend.